The next night I was there, about a 50-year-old man got up to the microphone, and he had a question written on two sheets of paper, and he began to read it. About 10 seconds into, his pres in, in, into reading the, the question, he just broke down crying. He couldn't go any further. So I walked off the platform, I went down to him, and he handed me these two sheets of paper. And all he said was, read it, read it. So I'm trying to digest this two-page question as I'm walking back up to the platform. By the time I got back up to the platform, I realized that that man was upset for two reasons. Reason number one, that man whose name turned out to be Steve had just discovered recently that a supposed friend of him a friend of his, a man by the name of Tom, about a 50-year-old man, had been sexually abusing Steve's daughter from the time she was age four to the time she was age 14. Right in his own home, under his nose, never saw it. The second reason Steve was upset was because the two men who were there the night before were his sons, who used to be Christians and are now atheists. They said, there can't be a good God, because he wouldn't have allowed this to happen to our sister. There is no God. So I said to him, Steve, it's okay to be mad at God. Some of the Bible writers are mad at God. Read Habakkuk, read, read the Psalms, some of the Psalms, read Lamentations. God, where are you? God can take it. He's an infinite being. But I hope at some point your sons are going to realize this is not a good argument against God. In fact, it's actually an argument for God. Why? In fact, here's what I said to him. I said, when the time is right, Steve, I want you to say this to your sons. If there is no God, what that 50-year-old man did to your sister isn't really wrong. It's just your opinion. Why? Because if there's no standard beyond humanity, it's just his opinion against yours. By the way, the man who did this is still walking the streets. Why? Everyone knows he did it, but he's not in jail. Because every time the trial comes up, Jessica, the one who was abused, psychologically checks out. She can't testify against him. She wanted to marry him. So I said, Steve, when the right time comes, I want you to say this to your sons. If there is no God, then the man who did this to your sister will never get justice. He's not going to get justice here on earth if she doesn't testify, and he's not going to get justice in the afterlife because according to atheism, there is no afterlife. Do you really think that's the way the universe is? Do you really think there's no such thing as justice? The very reason you're upset, rightfully so, is because you know a great injustice has been done. But there can't be justice, or I should say there can't be injustice unless there's justice. In fact, C.S. Lewis put it best. He said evil requires good and good requires God. He says, as an atheist, my argument against God was that the universe seems so cruel and unjust, but how had I got this idea of just and unjust? A man does not call a line crooked unless he has some idea of a straight line. What was I comparing this universe with when I called it unjust? In fact, it's been also put this way. The shadows prove the sunshine. In other words, in order to have evil, you have to have good. In order to have shadows, you have to have sunshine. Oh, you can have sunshine without shadows. You can have good without evil, but you can't have evil without good. Now, if something's evil out there, and Michael will agree there are many things that are evil, then there must be something good. What is that good? That good is God's nature. If there is no God, then there's nothing ultimately good or bad. There are just molecules bumping into one another. Now, Jessica... The girl that was abused decided to do something positive with this awful experience. She actually wrote a book. Here it is, Not Your Princess by Jessica Mitzel. I read one chapter of this book and couldn't read it anymore. Why am I telling you this? Because her father, Steve, wants many people, as many people as possible to know this. Because this happens too, far, too often in American homes. Now, ladies and gentlemen, is the sexual abuse of children evil? Yes, then God exists. I know that sounds counterintuitive because Michael's going to ask, why would he allow it to happen? That's a whole other conversation. But the point is you can't say God doesn't exist because it wouldn't, be, it wouldn't be evil unless he did exist because he's the standard of good by which we'd even know what evil was. He is the standard of measurement. Finally, 